to all of us, uh, Barbara and Amari, thank you coming aboard. Nalule Mevor, I reckon you're good. It's a beautiful thing to our HR. Thank you so much to all the team, our OD, uh, Mr. Babali Regan. Thank you so much for tuning in. And um, uh, we just want right now to uh, not take any further more time and dive into today's topic. What I want us to do today is basically to uh, ensure that we do um, have some time uh, when I'm done to just brainstorm. It's, uh, it's a, a, a little uh, uh, myopic for me, yeah, for us to be just having a singular dialogue. Uh, it is appropriate for us after people have uh, discussed to, to be able to, to, to what is your insight, what are the several things that you feel about the discussion. And in so doing, we are able to fashion, to, to fortify, to have an impartation uh, from several aspects because we have different ideologies, we have different angles on different things. Like every time we talk about, if I mention about the word odd, defiancy people have they have different perspectives and angles of interpretation and internalization and assimilation of truth and facts so after every discussion it's appropriate for us even as we uh, prepare ourselves for the discussions it's important for us to go further do a research and that uh, on top of what the people have discussed, we are able to share, ask questions, add nuggets, and let us be able as a family and as a nation of Transformers are be able to uh, uh, cohesively be able to impart one another, influence one another as we work ourselves to becoming Timeless Transformers. Once again, welcome aboard. Edwin Peter, the Timeless Transformer, your host tonight at the same time, the main discussant. Well, 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 well. Um, how about if we started uh, uh, taking our uh, uh, statement mission and uh, let us uh, dive into it? Is it there? Uh, because uh, it's one that rallies us to understand, you know, as timeless transformers, what is our core statement, you know? Statement of faith, you know, uh, uh, it is there, uh, just know, and uh, we're going to, at the count of one, two, three, we're going to go um, with our slogan and let us run with it. We are timeless, we are timeless, timeless transformers, and we, and we commit to live to, to, to our to great name. Yes. yes, that is it. We are timeless transformer. You're not ordinary. You're not. You're not like any other. You're not an accident. You are not a mistake. You are a timeless transformer. That even without your presence, your impact, your influence, the words you spoke, the works you did, the books you wrote, the people you helped, will timelessly speak about you because you spoke into their lives, and that timeless influence that you deposit, you seed into people will become reciprocated in every other person that you seeded them to. And they will also pass, in, pass it on to another person. And before you know it, the entire generation, even after you've left, wow, they will be able to leave off the impact, to leave off your timeless influence to live off your timeless transformation in their lives that is why we say we are timeless transformers that even after we've taken our last break there is something there is a seed that you deposited that you planted in someone's life into a community into a city into a nation into a world that the world shall feed on timelessly and so we ought to make sure that we live to it until we come into the fullness of our greatness well 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 without a further ado permit me right now to uh just dive into today's discussion i reckon i reckon we're gonna have a wonderful time it is no joker friends 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 i wish that you invited more people to get aboard today the discussion i'm leading if you have somewhere to write please make sure that you do right because we're gonna take a roller coaster as we down 
Lord ourselves with some truth, some insights, some principles, some um, revelations that are going to elevate us in order to become timeless transformers, timeless influencers in our families, in our households, in our cities, in our communities, and in our nation and the entire globe at large. Well, we will dive into it. Old defiancy is what we are dealing with today. Old defiancy. Mm, I love this. Mm, I love this. I can't wait. You know what? I can't even wait to, to start on it. So grace yourself for it and let us, let us, let us, let us make sure that we become what we get to hear tonight. Are you ready to roll, friends? Are you ready? Yes, we are ready. Yeah. Hey, okay. I reckon when Madame Julia says we're ready, I reckon all of us are ready. Some of you have the, uh, muted, which is very good. Uh, the rules of the house, we always mute ourselves. And then uh, when time is come to speak, we shall roll in again. But Anyways, today we are dealing with the old defiancy. Old defiancy. This is one thing every person that desires to live a higher life, that desires to, 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 to live a successful life, to live a timeless influencer life, to live a timeless transformer life, they ought to be in knowledge of this. To have a life that you live that has a well-beingness in it, it takes both discipline and the art of living it. So it is important for us to understand the art and the discipline of living a higher life. It takes a discipline, and not only a discipline, but also it takes knowledge. So as we pursue to live a higher life, a successful life, a timeless life, a timeless transformer's life, we ought to be in knowledge of certain truth that is going to self-exonerate us from the the, the, the bonds and the slavery that we've been in for a long time. Therefore, it is paramount of each and every timeless transformer as a family, as a nation of transformers, we ought to be in knowledge because they that are in knowledge will always have an upper hand all an age than them that are not in knowledge. They that are not in knowledge, they will get fired. But they that are in knowledge, they will have an age over the others. Every age has its challenges, like we are in today. Every age has its own challenges. But they that are in knowledge will have a lead way a leading way above them that are not in knowledge. Therefore, what do you choose to do in this age, in this day-to-day -day new modern age? What do you do when so much is happening around us? Fear, pandemics, exigencies, crisis is happening around us. As a person pursuing to be a timeless transformer, an exemplary person, a unique, a quack person. Quack as in Q U I R K, not, not Q U S E K. Quack as in Q U I R K. It means uniqueness, exemplary, with zenith, with difference. As a person of that caliber, of that pursuit, what do you do in such an age? So that's why it is important for us, man, as transformers, as timeless transformers, as timeless influencers, to ensure that we get some art, 
to live the, in the age that we are in today. In pursuit of living a higher life of timeless influence, impact, and transformation, we should be in total certainty of the endeavor embraced to us in order to rise above the unseen odds of life. That is the relevance of our discussion today. Knowledge is a weapon in the hands of the beholder, as the wages of ignorance are death or failure to the adamant therein. I repeat, knowledge is a weapon in the hands of the beholder as the wages of ignorance are death or failure to him that is adamant therein. In other words, if you're adamant to get knowledge in this day, a new modern era or age, you are bound to failure or death. If you become adamant, if you become stubborn to acquire knowledge in this day modern era, you are bound for failure and death. Therefore, it is paramount for us to understand, for us to understand that knowledge is pertinent for us as timeless influences as impactful personalities, you know, as, as, as timeless transformers, we ought to have knowledge. Therefore, in this age that we are in, it is paramount of us to acquire Sophia, which is a, a, a discipline of wisdom and knowledge that triggers study and analytically enables us to be able to become who we desire to become eventually. It is of enormous importance to know that as humans, we meticulously embrace this truth of life, that life will always present to us uneven and unleveled seasons. This is part of the equation of life. And one's response to them is determinant to the fall, to their fall or rise. So it is pertinent of us to understand that life will present us unleveled and even seasons. And it is of importance as well to understand this is an equation of life. It is part of the equation. So your response to it will be a determinant for your fall or your rise. How do you respond in seasons of unevenness? How do you respond in seasons when all is not level? The ground is not level. How do you respond in these times we are in when we are losing so many people? Fear is all over the world. How do you respond when the politicians have failed us, when the, 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 the religious uh, uh, institutions have failed us, the medical institutions have failed us? How do you respond in such an age? as a timeless transformer. This is the very relevancy of our discussion tonight and here this morning. Odd defiancy. It's always important to hope for the best. Take note of this. It is always important to hope for the best, but also prepare for the worst. As you pursue to become different, as you pursue to become an influencer, as you pursue mm, to be living a higher life, as you pursue to be a successful person in your community, in your family, in your nation, in your, in your, in your, your uh, uh, 
areas and jurisdiction of influence and authority, as you pursue that, you ought to hope for the best, but at the same time prepare for the worst. It gives you privilege to be able to wither the stones that hit your way, that calm your way. Therefore, one needs to always brace themselves up front of what lies ahead of them as a timeless transformer and an influencer of lives. So that is why we are talking about odd defiancy. A question will rise and say, what are you then trying to mean or defiancy? You see, it's a grammatical construction of two words, odd and defiancy. Odd basically is about, uh, uh, beside other uh, 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 explanation and definitions, but odd is, uh, at some point, it means having an even or unleveled ground. You're experiencing challenges. Things do not seem to go the way you expected them. So they are at odds with what you expected. You're hoping for the best, but you're seeing that what you thought would be an orange has turned out to be a lemon. What you thought it would be an addition, it is turned out to be a minus. What you thought it would be a multiplicity has turned out to be a division. And in that state, as a pursuant of higher living, of success, a pursuant of being an influencer, a timeless transformer, a person that desires to see a difference and a change in their lives, what do you do? What do you do? So that's why the, the, we are talking about these odds of life, the unleveled grounds, the uneven grounds, the challenges and the storms, the tribulations, the, 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 the trading of the waters and the storms that hit you and the waves that hit you in pursuit of your destiny. What do you do? So that's why we're discussing or defiance. In other words, defiancy is basically resisting, fighting, going against, contending against these uneven level storms, challenges, exigencies, crises, the, 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 the turbulences of life as you pursue your way to your destiny. What do you do? Every human has experienced odds of life. And they do not stop. Even when you succeed at one level, you will also find them on another stage of life. That's why we needn't ignore odds of life, but come up with an art and a discipline that positions us to have leverage that when they show up, you have squared up your shoulder and ready to wither through the storms and the turbulences and the odds and uneven and unlevel grounds that you experience in that stage of life. So what is all defiancy? In my personal view, it is the ability to contend, fight, resist, and rise above any form of uneven or unleveled experiences in one's pursuit of living a successful or a higher life. Your ability to contend Oh, to muscle up, to fight and resolve. I will rise up. I'll go past this storm. I'll go past this pandemic. I'll go past this COVID. I'll go past this family turbulence. I'll go past this marriage uh, uh, challenge. I'll go past this work challenge. I'll go past this financial date. I'll go past this hour will rise above it, the ability
ability to contend and fight against all unleveled and uneven experiences in one's pursuit of living a higher life. The storms of life, the challenges, the turbulences you experience, those are odds of life because they are uneven. You did not expect them. You hoped for the best, but you did not prepare for the worst. So the ground is not leveled as you expected, as you hoped. Therefore, what should we do? How do I defy these odds? How do I defy the storm? How do I defy the challenge? How do I defy this crisis? How do I rise above it? How do I do it? That is the question that lingers in everybody. Because every time we are caught in the rut, in the state of quagamaya, in a state of difficulty, in a state of uncertainty, the first thing that happens is a panic mode. Fear enshrines and blankets our souls and spirits, and we are caught in a state of uh, impairedness, mentally, emotionally, and physically, then what should somebody do to become odd defiant? But before I get to that, how to become odd defiant, how do you defy your stones, your and even grounds at your place of work, at your marriage, in your community, in your fraternities, because everywhere we are, we are surrounded with storms. You run away from your family thinking they've given you too much trouble, you're going to find it at work. People are going to say things about you. People are not going to like you because your boss likes you. People are going to speak ill about you. People are not going to they will find every reason to speak about you. You run away from your work, you're gonna go back to your community. Your community, some people are gonna fight you, they are going to mock you, they are going to scorn you. You run away from your community. Where else are you gonna go? Are you going to keep on running? You're gonna to go to the fellowship, even my dear, even your church. People will speak about you, they will scorn you, they will defame you, they will say all kinds of things about you, they will downlook you. Are you still going to run away? How long will you run? How long, my dear? So how do I defy this unlevel, uneven grounds of life? experiences of life, stages of life. How do I do that? But before I do that, I want to bring seven infallible truths or insight or, uh, or revelations on all defiance. Seven infallible, undisputable truth, principles, insights and revelations about our defiancy. Number one, life in itself is a paradox. Only to them that have not mastered the art of defying its odds. Yet a paradise to them, to the pacifiers of odds. I repeat, life is a paradox to them that have not mastered the art of defying odds but a paradise to the past fires of odds, to them that brings peace or rise above odds. What do you choose? That is number one. Many people that have not mastered the art of overcoming storms, 
They are the ones that see life as a paradox. They think life is meant to be beautiful all the time. No uneven grounds, no unleveled grounds. We are meant to have it all the way we want it. And they never take trouble to master it. So they find this a paradox. They find it so complex. That's what he's trying to say. They are in a gray zone of life. Neither black nor white. They're in between there. They are, they are in gray area. They can be swept with the winds. Wherever they go, that's where they go. They are very unstable, inconsistent, undependable, because they are not in certainty of what they are dealing with. Yet it is a paradise to them that pacify odds, that bring down the storms, call them down, silence them down, bring them to rest. It's a paradise to them. Why? Because they mastered the art. They mastered the art. Remember, living a well, a higher life, a successful life, a timeless life, you need both discipline and the art of defying odds. Number two, the other truth I want to bring to your awareness, one's response lenses, one's response lenses to seasonal odds will either sentence him to view life as a paradox or a paradise. Take note of this, one's response, one's response lenses. What are your lenses? What are your response lenses? Your response lessons will either sentence you to view life as a paradox or a paradise. When you are in a state of unevenness, challenge, storms, like what we are experiencing right now, could that be right there told us, I'm quarantined, I'm existing. All my other members have been hit with COVID. It is the fact that she can alter that. What is her response lenses in that situation? Everyone in the house has got it. She has not got it. What is your response lenses? What are you seeing in the midst of that? So your response lenses will either sentence you to view life as a paradox or as a paradise in the midst of the odds. So what are the lenses? What are your response lenses? How do you respond to the storm, to the challenge, to the turbulence, to the trial? How do you respond? Number three, odds of life are a precursor to every achiever. So manage them. I repeat, odds of life are a precursor to every achiever. Manage them. You're only in an illusion if you're desiring to become a timeless transformer, to live a higher life, to live a successful life, if you're without the truth of knowing that odds are part of life. Odds are part of life. Because life keeps changing. Life keeps changing. And as you change, you are going to experience new, new seasons in life. 
that are going to trigger you to bring discomfort and disruption in order to trigger you to rise up to another stage. So if you are pursuing to become an achiever, know this, odds are part of the equation. So odds of life are a precursor to every achiever. So manage them. Number, number I think number four, odd defiancy is a precondition and escapable to every potential candidate of greatness. I repeat, odd defiance is a precondition unescapable, a precondition unescapable to every potential candidate of greatness. Therefore, with all that you ought to do to become a great person in life, an achiever, an influencer, a transformer, a person that impacts lives and communities and nations and the globe, man, you ought to be put in the brackets of all defiance. So all defiance is a precondition. You cannot escape away from it. You ought to have the art of being all defiant. And that's why today I'm excited that we are going to take on some arts, some principles that are going to fortify us with the muscle to master the art of storms. Do you let the storms destroy you or make you become a celebrant? choose. Well, number five, any escape from odds of life is self-sabotage to living a higher life. I repeat, any escape from odds of life is self-sabotage to living a higher life. Friends, I want to let you know this. However much you like it or not, Odds of life, I've told you, are an equation to life. A part of the equation of life. So you escaping the odds of life is self-sabotage to living a higher life. No person in this world that is celebrated, that has not experienced odds of life, each and every achiever, personality, celebrity, uh, icons and legendaries and uh, all the influencers, the transformers of life that you know, mm, they've had their bouts of odds, of challenges, of trials, of crises. Why then think that you're going to be ordinary? Why do you think that you're going to be ordinary? So you escaping the odds of life is self-sabotage to living a higher life. Therefore, embrace odds of life with mastering, having the art of mastering these odds of life. The other last um, principle or truth I want to bring to your awareness or insight or revelation that I, I would bring forth is that odds of life are seasonal and never everlasting. I repeat, odds of life are seasonal and never everlasting. Get in terms with them. Get in terms with them. These are only seasonal. The odds of life are seasonal. We've seen things come and go. They are not there to last. 
We've seen ages, we've seen pandemics come. The days of the smallpox, it came and lived. Ebola came and went. We had a financial crime, uh, uh, um, an economic meltdown. It came and lived. Everything, all odds of life are seasonal and never everlasting. Get in terms with them. How? By mastering the art of defying odds. Are you ready to defy odds? Are you ready to become an influencer? You need to be odd defiant. You need to become a pastor that has mastered the art, the discipline of rising above your storms, your challenges. And that's what we are dealing today. Now that thing brings us to then how having known this truth, this revelation, help me. You're saying, help me, help me, help me. Mm, help me. How do I become all defiant? How do I become storm defiant, turbulent defiant? How? Crisis defiant, pandemic defiant. How do I become or defiant. That is what everyone is saying. That is what everyone has been waiting for. Take a little breath. Belt up yourself. Buckle up yourself. We are here to help each other win in life. And after I'm done, hesitate not to talk to me, to share with us what are some of the methodologies, the art, the discipline that you've been using to overcome. I would love also to learn. The day you stop learning is the day you start dying. I have to learn more. I'm quenching for more. As I empty myself into you, I stay empty. That means I need to learn more. I need to feed on something every day. I need to feed on something. So hesitate not when I'm done also to give me some insights over there. How do I become or defiant? How do I rise above my odds, my storm, my challenges, my crisis, my exigences, my catastrophic seasons? How do I rise above them? How do I become or defiant? Number one, it is very pertinent for you to understand the constants of life. I repeat, understanding the constants of life is very key. There are things that are constant in life. Some of which are time. Time is constant. It is always there. It is constant. We have to understand the art of managing it. We have to understand the art of running it. If we don't run it, it will ruin us. Number two, which I'm most interested in, in relevancy with our topic tonight, or defiancy, is change. Change is a constant of life. And that's what I want to speak about today. Change. We ought to understand that change is a constant of life. For you to understand, for you to become or defiant, you need as a timeless transformer, as a candidate of greatness, a potential candidate of greatness, a potential candidate of success, a potential candidate of impacting your community, your family, your, your nation, the world, you need to understand that this constant of life called change. Change is a necessary human constant of life man cannot do without. I repeat, change is a necessary human constant of life that man cannot do without. So you cannot run away from odds of life because they brought change in your life. No, it's like saying, oh my goodness, 
I've been enjoying sleeping since when I was born. I was, I've been enjoying just being carried. Now, 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 now I'm finding difficulties attempting to crawl. Every time I crawl, my knees are hurting. And then you, you start complaining, oh, I've crawled so much. Now my, my, I, I, I'm hurting because I'm attempting to walk. Every time I walk, I fall. And after you've started walking, every time you try to run, you, when you run, you slip down and you say, I don't want to run. Is that what we really desire? Think about it. The changes of life are constant. They are a human necessity of life. Change is necessary. It's a human constant of life that we cannot do without. Lest the moment we were born, because we are afraid of change and the challenges of change, because of our fear, we would have said, I don't want to become a grown up person. That's why, being that we cannot, it is the same reason we should not be afraid of change in times of crisis. Because what happens, why people panic? Because they didn't expect what is happening. So they feel they are in trouble. But the people you speak to that experienced the, age, the, the seasons of smallpox, for us, we are crying, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. They knew no more, they, they knew no more, they knew no more. The people that suffered, you find an elderly person is telling you about smallpox and he says, and you ask him, hey, look, I guess life is too hard for you and he's with a stick and he's telling you, how? No, life is okay. It is very okay. If you are only there when there was smallpox, it killed thousands of people, millions of people. And for them, they are not into the information age or the new modern age like we are of computer and digitalized. Probably the numbers even would have been greater. And you are here and he's still living on. It is your perception. How did he defy those seasons? A time will come, it will, you, it will be you telling the people in the new age that it will come. And you tell them, hey, look, what you're seeing today is nothing. We had COVID and we survived it. It's change. Do you know that change happens? Do you know that after every, almost every five to 10 years, there is a crisis, there is an exigency? I've talked about the, the, the times of uh, smallpox, uh, the times of Ebola, the times of uh, you know, the economic crunch. Now we are into the pandemic. What will come next? It is given, it is, it is been proven that after every five to 10 years, there is a, a global crisis. So should we stop living? No, we just need to master the art of odds, of storms. So understand that change is a human constant. So we ought not to do away with. We ought to master it. Oh, how I love the writer, Solomon. He wrote in one of his latest in his inscriptions, Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse three, I think he says that, uh, that uh, um, to everything there is a season. To everything there is a season. That means 
everything has a season. It is seasonal. It's going to change. That's why he continues to say there is a time to laugh and there is a time to mourn. There is a time to, 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 to kill and there's a time to, to make. There is a time, you know, and he's talking about all these things. There is a time to this and there is a time to this. There is a time to mourn and there is a time for joy. There is a time to sow and there's a time to harvest. So there is a, a, a season to everything. Or everything, to everything there is a season. But how do you master the art of coming out of that season? So odds of life are constant. Odds of life are constant. They are part of change. So we need to grace ourselves for them. After having understood that, then you come. Having realized, okay, now, yes, I understand it. If I'm going to become all defiant, storm defiant, challenge defiant, crisis defiant, catastrophic defiant, I need to understand that change is a constant of life. What happens next? Now I know. Number two, attitude. What is, what I talked about, your response lenses. What is your mind about change, about the crisis? Remember, we've said odds are seasonal and never everlasting. Manage them, they will pass. Still, the writer Solomon, one of the wisest, I think next to Jesus, he said, as a man thinketh, he is. And he says, everything is for a season. Why get worried? Then you should sit down and start thinking positively. In this pandemic, I will rise above it. I remember when I just got in here in America and the city of Boston, up north of North Shore, I, I got placards and everyone was worried. People were not moving. It was winter. I got placards, I, everywhere I switched on, the TV was talking about negativity, failure. I said, what is this? Everyone was in a total panic mode. I said, no, I am of a different mind. I wrote placards and they are still there. I wish one day I'd show them to my children. I wrote placards and said, America, we are strong. We will rise above this, much stronger than we came in. I went every day. I would break off my work and go stand around the supermarkets. And we, when it is very cold with jackets and the wind is so strong and I'll lift the placards and I'll just stand there for an hour in the coldness of the winter, lifting up, keeping people whole, trying to change their mindsets trying to change their mentality that don't give up. We can rise above this. What is your attitude? And as I did it, people will, in their cars around the, the, the stores and the, and the malls, they would begin to, to hold and horn and they, would, and they would give me thumbs up because I had a different mindset. And here, Life is getting back to normal. Your mindset in your crisis is very key. As you think, so are you. My sister Fidabi, don't say you're just existing. You're not here just to exist. You're on an assignment over there. It's the time to empower. Slide, write something down. Slide it to your, to your, to your bosses under in your quarantine, write something and write down something and tell them, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. You're going to rise above this storm. COVID will not take you down. You will come out a better brand after this. Sleep it under the door and see the life, the illumination, the influence you make in their hearts 
Wow. They will begin to see a different you. Why? Because you have just triggered them to start thinking differently, to believe that they will rise above it. What is your state of mind in your crisis? In your crisis? In your problem? In your pandemic? The Japanese word for crisis is opportunity. What is your mindset in crisis? Number three, I won't take long. Some of the things you'll find them in the book. Number three, language. After you've worked on your mind, language. Language is the nature of communication that proceeds out of your tongue. What is your language? What are you releasing? What is your language, the nature of communication of your tongue? What you speak, you invent. I repeat, what you speak, you invent. Are you there? Are you there? Can I hear somebody say yes? Yes, yes. we are here. Okay, thank you so much. At times you get quiet and I'm like, oh my goodness, I hope we are together. The other thing is language. What is the nature of communication that proceeds out of your tongue? What you speak, you invent. That's why still one of the wisest men, the writers I love, feeding on every day. Proverbs 20, uh, Proverbs 18, 21, it says, the power of life and death is in the tongue. Mm. <laughs> I love this. The power of life and death is in the tongue. A seasoned communication is of necessity in times of odds. I repeat, a seasoned communication is of necessity in times of needs. What is your language? Language is a very integral, pertinent, essential part of a human being. Season your language. Season your tongue. Don't just speak because you had everyone spoke. Oh, everyone is dying. Yes, they are dying, but what is your language? What you speak, you invent. You create a world by your language. You create a world you live by your language, by your communication. Solomon is telling it to us that the power of life and death, you are either every time you proceed to communicate, you're either releasing life or death. I repeat, every time you open your mouth to make utterances, you are either releasing life or death. Choose what you release out of your mouth, death or life. Don't just speak like everybody's speaking. Yes, there is COVID, you say. My family will not have COVID. They will not. I am different. We will live by the stand, the SOPs, and we will survive. We will rise above it. Language. You're creating life. You're inventing life. The language. Monitor your language. Season your language. Season your communication. Don't see what people are posting on, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, WhatsApp, and you just run with their language. No. Define, season your language, what to speak and what not to speak. We are life givers as timeless transformers. We ought to speak 
a timeless transformers language and it ought to give life it ought to influence it ought to impact what do you communicate what language do you have in your times of crisis number four i have to rush man this is so powerful declaration after you have seasoned your language begin to declare roar 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 your language declare it pronounce it that's what i did when i got the attitude i got the language but because i couldn't speak everyone was in fear i declared it on a placard and went and stood by the malls by the stores in the cold and i pronounced we shall rise america we shall rise better than we came in we will rise above this crisis we will rise above this pandemic and people were giving me thumbs up declare and it did affect me neither my family so shall it not affect you when you declare pronounce in your crisis at your place of work pronounce it write placards you know write inscriptions in your in your in your housing in your bedroom on your refrigerator write it even in your rest in your restrooms write inscriptions that declare as you declare it as you speak it as you 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 think about it it begins to create a world around you declare what you want to become declare what you want to see yourself in the crisis declare it pronounce it and you eventually become it you know write all those post virtual uh, inscriptions declare them on your facebook on your instagram on your twitter post them on your whatsapp we are in the modern age you know we are in the new modern age of digital computers use them declare it our declarations are creations of the world we desire i repeat our declarations you know are creations of the world we desire to see the world you desire to see is trapped inherent of your declarations so declare roar matter matter those words matter what you want to become what you want to see yourself out of the crisis decree your heart's desire into existence decree it that's why one of the men that suffered one of the most catastrophic experiences of life job he roared he muttered, he declared. That's why he said in Job 22, uh, 28, 30, he said, you shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. Wow. This is a man that was hit left, right, and center. He lost his children, you know? He lost his wealth. He was inflicted with boils. A pandemic of that season hit him hard. He lost his, uh, his herd, his flock. He lost all his wealth. One of the richest billionaires of the time, the golden age. One of them, billionaires, multi billionaires. He lost everything, but listen at his language. Listen at his attitude. Listen at his declaration. He says, decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. You know, decree your heart's desire into existence. You know, our declarations are creations of the world we want to see. So make sure you decree, you declare what you want to see. Number five, keep doing what you do 
amidst the storm, amidst this pandemic, amidst the COVID, amidst that turbulence, keep doing what you are doing. Don't sleep off. You find people at work, they just want to, you know, to just clock in anytime they want. My wife, when the pandemic reached, she, she challenged me. They started working from work. She used not to commit because she used to wake up uh, before when they used to commit, she would wake up at four. Catch the bus to go to work to town in, in Boston, she, she, she would be by the bus stop by five because she had to be to the office by, by 7.30. In the cold, she would walk. Now, when the pandemic hit, she had to work from home. You know, she didn't stop waking up at four. She'd wake up, prepare for the baby, prepare, prepare what I, I'll, I'll carry for work. And, you know, very, she managed everything. And then when 7.30 reached 7, 15, 10, she was on her laptop. And this time she would not clock in at 7.30. She would clock in at 7.15. Yet she's meant to be there at 7.30. Wow. That was amazing. I was like, what? No wonder they say, if you want to be something that you've never been, try to do something that you've never done before. I said, Hansa, you too. You know, Madame Juvia, she's working hard at, at region in Barada. Everyone is, you know, she's working. She's at our office. What do you do? Some of you are working from home, but even punching in to clock in for the time to, for the discussion, it's so hard for you. And yet you want to be a timeless transformer. Man, we got to go past that. Because of COVID, COVID does not stop us doing what we have to do. We have to go ahead, plan, strategize. Remember, we've often said, success is not stumbled into, it is strategized for. Keep strategizing. Mr. Hubbard, Mabel, Fedabi, all the visions, the dreams you had, keep at it. Right now, in the COVID, the boardrooms are strategizing. They are working. The pandemic is there, but they are strategizing. How do we go past this pandemic, past this crisis? It is affecting us, but they are not showing you and they will never show you how they were hit, but they will stay afloat and they will become they will come out of it greater than they came in. That is what they call timeless transformers, achievers, candidates of greatness. That is their culture. That is their nature. They don't stop doing what they have to do. You don't stop working. We are strategizing as transformers have. We are looking at the schools, impacting and influencing and transforming young people. We have never stopped, even in the pandemic with the first strain and with the second strain, we are strategizing. The team has not slept. It's working tirelessly. So that when we are out of it, how do we flourish schools, unions, colleges, communities? Establishing satellites in communities, in cities, in schools, in colleges, so that we have a viral that goes from, from, from college, from primary college, uh, uh, high secondary uh, universities, then to the communities, then to the, to the, to the, to the, to the corporate world with transformers have, so that it eventually becomes a nation. That's why I keep saying we are transformers nation. Someone told me, don't say that. We have not yet come to that. Let us start with family. But I'm trying to declare. A writer wrote in the book of Habakkuk that write down your vision so that they that see it may run away from it. 
Why? Because it's too big. At times when you have people that see this far, they might limit you because they don't want you to declare it. So they can't, they can't even have the passion and the inspiration. Someone said that uh, you rather train a dog rather than train an African. Because he's so stubborn, he will not go. Africans, we, the, 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 we, actually for us, we are not Africans. We are a transformers nation. We don't believe that, that, that language. We keep doing what we have to do. We train to be excellent, to be exemplary, to be timeless influencers. But most of the Africans, they don't have inspiration to do excellency, to perform at the best of their peakness. They don't have that inspiration. That's why they came up with that cheap talk. Somebody, whoever wrote it, I don't believe in their ideology because I don't belong to an African nation. I belong to a transformers nation with a different mindset, with a different language, with a different uh, season language and tongue. And I keep doing what I have to do with an inspiration to be excellent, to be the best. Ask Madame Atrinda, in my humble life, we, I, she saw power, greatness in me, and she believed in me. But I was in my humble life. I did give up. I don't know whether Madame Julia remembers. There is a time I was, I was, um, I was meant to deliver cake. I had golden petals events, and I was rushing on the border. Border. We were preparing for an event, and man, I had this cake for the function. Time was too late. I couldn't use a car. I had to get a border for this function. And I had this entire cake and it was raining. It was hitting on me. Then somehow, as we were treading through the, 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 the streets of Kampala rushing for this event, the border as it was dodging because of the rain, there was not visibility enough. He was going to run into a car and as he tried to swerve around it, there we were, bang, on the bike with the cake. I tried, I was saving the cake and forgetting my life because I wanted excellency and I broke my knee. It took me time, asked Madame Julia. But even it didn't stop me when Mr. You're in mute. Unmute. Sorry. No, I was telling you about the story about um, about how I I was trying to keep doing what I was doing. I fell on the board, I was delivering this cake. I hurt myself. Madame Julia is my witness. And then I, I, I bruised my leg and because of that time, it was raining and I'm the events manager, I have to MC and all these things. And I had to hold the cake regardless whether the border fell and crashed bruises. I got hold of the cake as saving the cake, my dear. And that did not stop me that I've gotten an accident. I went ahead with the cake and I delivered it. They said, what is, what is wrong? I told them, man, I've just had an accident. They couldn't believe. And they were like, oh, you need to go to the hospital. That's when they realized. I just went. Madame Julia is my witness. You have to keep doing what you have to do in times of crisis. What if I said, ah, I've got a crisis. I've got an accident. I'm, you know. It was a challenge. It was not going to be forever. I had to rise out of it and proceed. Rise above your storm by consistently keep doing what you do. Do not stop as transformers have. We live off 
You know, the little pennies we get, even without work, we are pushing on. Even in the pandemic, we are pushing on. Regardless, we are saying we will not give up. What is it you're doing during the pandemic? If you are working, begin to strategize. If the office has locked you out, it's the time to strategize. How do I improve my performance at work? By the time you go back, you are way ahead. You're much stronger. You've got more knowledge. Learn something new. Equip yourself. Fortify yourself for your work so that when you go back, they see a different you. Maximizing your odds of life, which I'll talk of later. You know? So it is important for you to know that. You know? The other thing that you need to take, take lessons from your seasonal odds. You know? As you sorry, before you, I, I, I run away from that, I, I, I just want to let you know we are never rewarded for our perfectionism, rather for our persistence and consistency. I repeat, we are never rewarded for our perfectionism. Nobody needs you to be perfect, but they just want to study your trail of persistence and consistency, because those are two different things. That's why uh, one of the new century uh, writers, Paul, did say that uh, in the book of Galatians 6, 9, he said, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In due season, you will reap. Don't get weary. Keep doing what you have to do. Don't get weary. Do not faint. Don't throw in the towel. Stay focused on what you are doing. Learn something new. Maybe it's the time to learn, begin doing something. Learn something new. Anyway, uh, that is the next point I'm going to talk about is uh, number six, is taking lessons from your seasonal orders. Listen, adversity is the greatest school of life to earn you a life incomparable. I repeat, adversity is the greatest school of life to earn you a life incomparable. Exploit its schoolings. In adversity, that is the greatest school of life that will earn you an incomparable life. You know? So make sure that you are strategized, you are, uh, you are muscling up yourself. Learn from your adversity. Don't just say eh, things are going bad, we don't know what to do. No. The Japanese call crisis opportunity. Their eyes are blind. Where do I get? What do I do? Learn something new. Take lessons from it. The crisis. Learn to write a book. Right now, I, I, I wrote, um, I, I took my time writing books in my pandemic. You get it? So it is important you take that, you know. Adversity is the greatest school. Every event of life is predominantly purposed for a schooling or celebration of victory. What do you take from it? What do you take from it? Every event of your life is predominantly purpose for a schooling or a celebration. So choose. Every present is a school that prepares us for the future that we desire. So know what you're experiencing is preparing you for the future you desire. Because our present is the future that we desired in our past. I repeat, our present is the future that we desired in the past. We are desiring for this kind of life where we are today. It's the future. We saw ourselves in the past. That's what we were preparing for. And our present is also a preparation for the future we desire to see. So master your present. 
Also, I want to let you know, every occurrence is a designated class to brand us a better version. Like any seed is placed in the soil, it is subjected to heat, torture, and that heat begins to erode it, remove the chaff, and the chest begins to break up. As you break up in this crisis, you're becoming better. Before you know it as a seed, you begin to shoot out with life, new life, to be, make you a better version of you. What was a seed now becomes a plant. Likewise, the Bible calls us the incorruptible seeds, the seeds of Abraham. We are seeds. They evolve to become plants and bear fruits. If you're going to bear a fruit as a timeless transformer, as a person of influence, learn to take lessons. James says, count it joy when you go through the diverse temptation. James 1, 2, and 4. And says, the trying of your faith worketh patience. And patience, after it is perfected, you may be not wanting. In other words, in your adversity, you're perfected. So make sure that you take lessons from it. You know, it is important for you to understand that. You know, the other thing is hospitality. A seed of love in times of adversity is like streams of waters, you know, down a dry and thirsty land. Your seeds of love in the times of pandemic, helping somebody, even though with 2,000 shillings, it can bring life to that person. Offer your love. You're mute. I'm mute again. Oh my God. Now you're back. Sorry? Now you're back. I'm back. Yeah, I think it's, you know, I don't know what is happening. But yeah, the seeds of love, you know, the seeds of love are, 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 are important in the times of uh, calamity and trials and odds of life. When you offer something to somebody, that very seed you've sown into someone will reciprocate itself one day in your life. It's the future that you desire. It will meet you in your future. It goes ahead of you into your future and it bears fruit. So when you get into your future, like how did I end here? I don't deserve this, but you're forgetting the seed you saw in the time of your old life, your uneven life, your unleveled life, your crisis. So take hold, take hold of it. That's why Peter says, that's 4, 9, 10. He says that, uh, that uh, use hospitality to one another without grudging. So use your hospitality, your love. Every time you sow your seed of love, man, it changes a life. It will give you peace. It will give you rest. It will be healing to your soul. Seeing somebody that is hurting in your crisis, in the midst of your crisis, that you help, you're able to help somebody else. It's a therapy to your soul because you've helped somebody else. So take hold of it. I have to rest up us and let me do a few, a few points and I'll be done in the next five minutes. I'm gonna be done. Your manufacturer's guide. Number eight, make sure you consult your manufacturer's guide. Like any car, it is designed to overcome storms and corners and roughy areas. It is designed. So when it comes into that position and the, the person is failing, he always puts out the guide and is like, how do I go through the deserts? How do I go through the storm? The guide says this, and you're able to go through. How about the human being? We have a manufacturer's guide, which is called a manual, an instructions guide. Consult your manufacturers, your creator's guide. There are lots of, of, of inscriptions that he guides us on how to go through the storms. He says that there are so many tribulations in this world, which is odds of life, but be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. What is your creators? I don't know which faith you belong to, but the faith I belong to, you, regardless, every faith you belong to, as long as you feel your creator, Consult your creator, say, how can I go through this before you start the day? And it will be good. So make sure that you consult. You know, inherent of every creation is an inbuilt power to defy odds of life. Revisit your manufacturer's guide. 
Take note of that. Inherent of every creation is the power to defy odds of life. So revisit your manufacturer's life. Proverbs 8, 17 says, I love them that love me, and they that defend me, seek me, they shall find me. Seek your manufacturer's guide. He will help you in the times of storms. The Bible says that he has the cries of them that are that, 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 of the righteous and delivers them out of them it all. We know when they are afflicted, he delivers them. So please consult your creator's guide in the midst of the storm. It says that he'll keep away all these diseases far from us. He says that he will our diseases. He'll send his word to heal his disease. His word is his, our guide, our manual guide, our creator's guide. He sends his word, speak his word. That's what we talked about language. Decree it, declare it. Speak the word, what your faith tells you. Speak to that disease, it will go. That's why you pray and kneel and pray and God hears you, regardless of the faith you're in. And then peace abounds again. You become a pacifier of storms, a defiant of storms. And people are like, how do you people manage? How do you go through this when you don't have work? Why? Because you consulted your creator's guide. And that is the word of God, which is in the Bible. You know, the other thing I want to, our time is first spent. I just want Jonah just uh, indicate to me how much time I'm left, but uh, I should be leaving in the next three minutes. Uh, let me end with this. The 12, maximizing the seasons. Maximize, translate your thorny crisis into a season of roses. Translate your thorny crisis into a crown of rosy seasons. Every minus reconfigure it into an addition and every division retranslate it into a multiplication. Maximize your moment. Look for opportunities. Look, look, opportunities. Crisis is opportunity. Look for them. They are there. Not in a bad way, but in a good way. Look for them. Speak to people. Pray for people. As you pray for them, that person you pray for, he will remember you one day. As you write a scripture, as you empower someone, you are maximizing the moment. You're not just laying down there. Work on your garden. Work on your house. You know, learn to rear chicken. Learn to do this. Learn to do that. You know, you're maximizing your moment. So take hold of it. You know, you know, Ephesians 5.15 says, seek you that you walk circumspectively, not as fools. Be creative, be innovational. You know, all things work out for those that he loves. Maximize everything that happens to us. It's for our good. Maximize it. Don't just let it pass. Learn something new. Learn to write a book. Learn to write a poem. Learn to, 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 to come up with something. Create something new. Maximize the moment. In the midst of it, prepare, preparation. The word prepare also means to, to in the midst of your odds of life, prepare, pre, before, and pair means to trim, to cut, to prune yourself. In other words, preparation, which, which is very healthy for us. You know, cut off unhealthy friends, associations, groups, habits. Prepare yourself, prune yourself. Wrong magazine, wrong books, wrong friends. All these are destiny slayers. They are slaying you. When you hear she's a slayer, the word slayer means killer. That's why girls are called slayers because they kill your destiny, your dreams. They want nice things. They never think of anything constructive. They are destroying dreams, destroying lives. They are destiny slayers, you know, slayers, books, wrong books, magazines, wrong videos, you know, put them away. Start reading new books. Prepare yourself that after the crisis, you will rise above. You will shine. I will not take long on that. In other words, if you don't do that, you're impairing your vision to see soundly. Your vision is clouded. Last, after you prepared yourself in the odds of life, separate yourself. As you prepare, separate yourself. One is separation is his setup for a grandier 
apparition. Oh, my God. One is separation is a setup for a grandier apparition. Apparition means to raise up, to, to become better, to become different, you know? So you, when you separate yourself, do a self-review, do a self-evaluation, self-audit yourself. Where have I been going wrong? Where, have I been, where am I weak at? As you separate yourself, see your weaknesses and concentrate on your, your strength and your strength will overshadow your weaknesses. And before you know it, you shine. Often at times, crowds cloud our soundness in mind, in decision-making. They are very detrimental. So get away from crowds. They will cloud your vision, your sanity. Separate yourself. That's why Paul wrote as a new century writer, he said, come out from them and be separate and touch no unclean thing. Please don't do. Let go of those bad friends. Let go of those people the bad magazines and let us do it. And when you do that, you shall have an impartation. In your times of words of life, you will have an impartation. An impartation means endowed with power to, 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 to empower others. You are endowed with power. When you do all these other things, you will have an impartation of wisdom. There is a guaranteed acquisition of wisdom in the odds of seasons because you prepared yourself you you've separated yourself you've gone ahead to to maximize the times you've gone ahead to 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 make sure that 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 you you you, you let go of the crowds you you change your language you begin to declare you begin to understand that changes of life are constants of life and they are necessity to your to your human life and as you do that you're impacted with wisdom you're taking lesson, lessons from each and every other day. You're implanted with vast wisdom, and that wisdom fortifies you and makes you a different person, a person of value, a person who is odd defiant. And that's how you become odd defiant. I pray that uh, you are able to be blessed. And I want to tell you, as timeless transformers, we are not going to give up. That's why Paul said, I long that I may impart some spiritual gifts that in the end you may be established. When you're imparted with wisdom, you are established. So God bless you. Have a wonderful time. Choose to rise above your odds, your challenges, and God will richly bless you. I love you so much. And uh, do not be dismayed. Do not be worried you're going to rise above the odds of life that you're experiencing today. You've got it inside of you. There is power trapped in, inside of you to overcome, to defy. Sorry, to defy your storms and your challenges. God bless you. I hand over back to Madame Carol. Are you there? Yes, I am. Yeah, take it on. Wow, 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 that was so amazing. Maybe let's uh, give it up for uh, Mr. Timeless Transformer. You can probably put on a reaction to appreciate him uh, like the way I've done if you're really blessed by today's uh, session. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Edwin Peter Sewan Campbell. It was really a blessing. I know you've uh, emptied yourself a lot that we may uh, get uh, something about odd defiancy. About uh, odd defiancy. Thank you very much. Unless anyone is there with a question, please, uh, you can respond to us. And Edwin, before he leaves us, he's there to answer your question. Uh, you might be there with a question. Barbara, do you have a question? No. <laughs> Just okay, I pray, I pray to leave. I've uh, got another meeting I have to attend to, and uh, I wish you all the yeah. best. I love you, the family. Barbara, I love you so much. Take care of yourself, mm -hmm. always. We love you. You're the best. Herbert, thank you. Every other, Mark Tricos, uh, Mambo, man, you guys are awesome. We love you. Madame Julia, we can't wait to feed from you next week. I can't wait. All of you, we love you. I God know. bless. Bye bye. As I leave you, to, I leave you with the host. God bless. Bye. Bye.